Okay, 34 minutes gone past uh, 4 o'clock. You're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3. My name is Kola Wally. Welcome to the office. It's Thursday. So by this time, you know what time it is. We get to get talking about the office environment. We get to talk about um, um, managing resource persons within the workplace. And today we've got the next part again to come do justice to our topics revolving around the office. Today we have an expert, like I said, his name is Henry Onukuba on the office, is MCIPM, and you know definitely that the office is proudly brought to you by the Chattad Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM, and Lagos Talks 91.3. Now the person we'll be speaking with, uh, Henry Onukuba, MCIPM, is a senior fellow and full-time faculty at Lagos Business School, uh, Pan Atlantic University. Uh, he is the academic director of the Global Chief Executive Program and leads sessions in leadership, HRM, organizational behavior, management, communication, and negotiation at the school. Now, he had held various senior administrative positions at the school as director of executive education MBA Director and Director of Alumni Relations. Before joining the Lagos Business School, Henry was Managing Director of Hibon Consult, a human resource consulting firm and CEO of CBSSL Limited. He is the Chairman of the Education Committee of CIPM and Chairman of the Planning Committee of the Second CIPM International Academic Conference. His name once again is Henry. <coughs> Onukuba, M-C-I-P-M. On uh, this juncture, you get, get to hear his voice. Good evening to you. Good to have you on the program this evening, Henry. Good evening. Good evening. My pleasure to be with you. Good evening. Right. Thanks for inviting. Okay. Good to have you. All right. Um, how has work been today? It's been, it's been busy, but uh, uh, we're on top of it. We thank God. Okay. So today we have a very important topic and it's in line with what is trending as far as... Uh, the African space is concerned, Africa is concerned, and uh, we're going to try to link the current affairs within the African space with the workplace. And today's topic revolves around that, the impact of the AF CFTA on diversity and inclusion in the workplace. We're going to try as much as possible to um, treat all the questions that uh, are on the table today and hopefully give room for you listening at home to and at work or wherever you are to listen in and chime in with your questions and contributions. So Henry, um, we've been hearing about the AFCFTA and the last time I checked that was Africa uh, Continental Free Trade Area. Is that correct? Very correct. So we've been hearing about this for a while and uh, it, it, what comes to mind is transportation, but do you want to educate us about what this is all about? Yeah, thank you very much. The AFCFTA is one of the projects of uh, Agenda 2063, uh, mm -hmm. titled The Africa We Want, which is the agenda of the African Union's long-term development strategy for transforming the continent into the world, uh, the world house. Um, at the 25th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of Heads of State, and government of the African Union held in June 2015 uh, in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, the AFTA was launched. And then in March 2018 in Kigali, Rwanda, it was signed. The agreement was signed at the 21st Extraordinary Summit of, uh, of, the, of the African Union Heads of State and Government. Mm. Then um, the AFTA is the world's biggest free trade area, comprising 55 nations of the African Union and comprising eight regional economic communities. Hmm. 54 countries of these 55 countries have signed the agreement. Only Eritrea is here to sign. Okay. Out of these 54 countries, 43 countries representing 80% have ratified the agreement, and that includes Nigeria. Okay. On January 1st, 2021, just last year, trade under 
the AFC FTA officially commence. Mm-hmm. Um, the broad objective of the AFC FTA is to create a single continental market with an estimated population of 1.3 billion people and an expected gross domestic product GDP of 3.4 trillion US dollars. Now, it's, it comes in phases. There are three f- different phases of the AFC FTA. Phase one mm. is the negotiations on the protocols on trade in goods, trade in services, and the protocol on the settlement of disputes. This phase is now completed. Okay. Though some part of the phase, which is uh, talking about tariff scheduling, uh, service scheduling, and what we call the rules of origin, are yet to be completed, but they're almost completed. Mm. Phase two is on negotiations on protocols on intellectual property, competition, and investment. Mm. This is ongoing. Then phase three is on negotiations on e-commerce. This is yet to start. Mm. So that's in a nutshell what AFTA is all about. Okay, so, wow, that's a lot to do to stomach. And I know there, there are more details to all of the things that you mentioned right there, but it's quite interesting. But what would you say are the challenges uh, the AFCFTA is coming to the picture to solve? Um, what do you think are the challenges that have been identified? And how do you think this innovation is going to, you know, fill up those gaps? Thank you very much. The first challenge is uh, removal of uh, uh, I mean, trade barriers. Uh, amongst African nations. So the AFTA is, um, is mandated to remove these trade barriers and increase intra-Africa trade, particularly to facilitate trade in value-added production in all service sectors of the African economy and to ensure long-term peace and security while doing this. Now, the AFTA will enhance the, the, the creation of value chains in Africa engendering investment and employment opportunities. It has the capacity to stimulate industrialization and boost the competitiveness of Africa in the medium to long term. Now, if done well, AFTA will contribute to boosting the combined consumer and business spending in Africa to over $6.7 trillion by 2030. According to the World Bank estimates, by 2035, the AFCFTA could increase real income gains by as much as 7% and boost African exports by $560 billion. Now, secondly, AFTA will significantly reduce poverty levels in Africa. If well implemented, it is expected to lift 30 million Africans out of acute poverty okay. and increase the incomes of 68 million people who live below $5.50 per day. It mm. is expected to cut custom bureaucracy. So this after is supposed to, is expected to cut custom bureaucratic procedures and facilitate trade which will drive up to $450 billion in expected income gains. What more, it's even expected to address gender economic imbalance. Mm. You know, according to the Secretary General of APTA, who is uh, Mr. Wankele Mene, mm. and I'll quote him, AFTA will be the opportunity to close the gender income gap and the opportunity for SMEs to assess new markets. And this is significant because the SMEs and MSMEs constitute 90% of jobs in Africa. So the Economic Commission for Africa say that, uh, says that women account for around 70% of informal cross-border trades in Africa. So if after it's well implemented and this trade is liberalized and, uh, and uh, well structured, Women who would have been vulnerable to harassment, violence, confiscation okay. of goods, okay. and even imprisonment would benefit from this after. Okay. And then it reduces the tariff, 
that we enable informal women traders or break through formal channels, bringing better protection. So really, there is so much to gain from mm. the uh, AFCFTA. Interesting. You're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3, and currently we're speaking here, joined us via Zoom. We're speaking with Henry Onukuba, MCIPM. We're speaking about uh, some of the advantages of uh, this new innovation, the AFCFTA, that's the African Continental Free Trade Area. And uh, we're looking at the possibility of it cutting across uh, the entire continent to improve and um, boost trade. We're going to go on a break right now, Henry. But when we come back, I'm looking forward to hearing from you as to how this impacts the workplace locally. Because, of course, Lagos and Nigeria and even the entire region of West Africa is duly focused on economic empowerment. We'll go on this quick break. And when we come back, we'll delve into that part of the conversation. You're listening to The Office here on Lagos Talks 91.3. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the office here on Lagos Talks 91.3. My name is Kola Wale, and we still have Henry with us this evening speaking about uh, the topic, uh, the African Continental Free Trade Area. And um, of course, not just that, we're also going to be focusing on diversity and inclusion in the workplace. And that takes us to our next uh, question this evening. Henry, are you there? I'm with you. Okay. Yes, so, with you. Yeah. so let's, let's bring things local briefly now, or local. Um, how do you think this will impact Lagos or say Abuja? I, I want to believe they're going to run this link through the capitals. So if it's the capitals, it's most likely going to be Abuja. Uh, but then again, there's ag arguments that it should be in Lagos because it's a, uh, the commercial hub of, of the country. But then again, it doesn't really matter anyway. But locally, how do you think this is going to impact um, diversity in the workplace here in Nigeria? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, let me start by defining uh, the terms. Diversity. What is diversity? Diversity is a state of having differences. Today, we have five generations in the workplace. We have the, gen, uh, the traditionalists, we have the Gen X, we have the baby boomers, we have the millennials, we have the Gen Zs. So there's diversity in age, there is diversity in race, there is diversity in gender, ethnicity, religion, uh, physical attributes. Some are able, some are challenged. We have diversity in education, in uh, marital statues, in language, you know, so many forms of diversity. So that is diversity. But there is inclusion. Inclusion is the act of belonging, encouraging belonging. So it means providing a work environment where all these various diverse individuals feel included or feel a sense of belonging in the organization. So you can actually have diversity without having inclusion. So how does AFTA affect, I mean, how can we bring in diversity when we're talking about AFTA? So the point is mm -hmm. that AFCFTA is talking about trade, 
within Africa. So whether it's happening in Nigeria or House or uh, in Lagos or in Abuja, it is still the context of Africa. Just three days ago, the world population, or two or three days ago, officially crossed the eight billion people mark. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is now officially the sixth largest country in the world by population. And our estimated population is uh, 2.16 million people. We will be, we're expected to be the fourth most populated country by 2050. We will only be less in population to China, India, and USA. Oh. We are supposed to overtake Indonesia and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So out of these 8 billion people, Africa has about for 13 to 14%. So we're talking about a huge population. So all the aspects of diversity that we have mentioned are present in Nigeria mm -hmm. and in Africa. Okay. 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 For instance, Africa yeah. has... Yeah, go ahead, quickly. Should I go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Africa has 3,000 tribes speaking 2,144 languages. Mm -hmm. Nigeria alone has 371 tribes and even more language. So... A few countries in Africa are already sympathetic to diversity in gender classification. So, you know, gender in the 21st century is no longer male and female. No, there are other parts or other, you know, forms of gender. And then sexual orientation. So when you open up this trade, you know, the, the, the businessman in Lagos dealing, uh, uh, having business dealings with somebody in South Africa, how will he manage this diversity? Even in social structure, in power distance, yeah, there right. is diversity. Okay. You know, both within Nigeria, the power distance in the Yoruba yeah. nation may not yeah. be the same as the power distance in the Igbo, Igbo, Igbo nation. So okay. these are various things. Uh, mm. These are reality. So what would the HR practitioner do? Yeah. I was going to ask to navigate that. navigate this. Mm. Yes. So it's about cultural intelligence. Cultural intelligence. According to David Livermore, cultural intelligence is an individual's capacity to function effectively across national, ethnic, and organizational cultures. So aspects of culture include physical environment, education, values and attitudes, manners and customs, social structure, religion, communication style, power distance, like I mentioned before. So how will you manage that? How will you, you know, be able to... Uh, uh, Take care of the uh, your employees that cut, cut across all these various cultures. So, in 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 cultural uh, being culturally intelligent requires three uh, components: the cognitive, the head. You must know about other people's culture. Mm -hmm. You can now sit down in your room and say, "This is the way." No, you must expand your horizon about the culture or the people that you are dealing with. The heart, the emotional. You must be motivated to adjust and adapt to other people's culture, despite the obstacles. And then the physical, the body. You must be capable to generate the appropriate behaviors in a new cultural setting, so that you 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 will be seen as, you know, a leader of all mm. within okay. your organization. Mm -hmm. Let me stop at that. Okay, this is like, this is robust. It's a topic we, we cannot um, pretty much wrap up, but hopefully we can do this in the next uh, eight minutes. We have limited time. Uh, but tell us about more about how we can get more information about this innovation, this um, AFCFTA. Um, in case anyone is listening right now and the, how this would Im impact workplaces across the nation, is there a way or a medium in which one can get more information, one can learn more, about the EFCCFTA? Thank you very much. It's a very important question. The CIPM, of which I represent, has uh, recognized the importance of this topic. And because of that, we're organizing the second international academic conference with the theme, the commencement of AFCFTA, Opportunities for the Work Environment. It's a two-day conference. It will hold on March 14 and 15 at the Leeds City University Auditorium in Ibadan. Mm. Now, the conference will be chaired by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, Professor Kayo De Adebowale. And it's an international conference. So we are going to have speakers and panelists from all over Africa. 
our keynote speaker will be Professor Patrick Tommy. It doesn't uh, require introduction. Then we have speakers from Kenya. We have Madam Kweresha Abdullahi, who is the Executive Secretary, Institute of Human Resource Management of Kenya, and has just been appointed the Principal Secretary to the new President of Kenya. Uh, from Ghana, we have Dr. Farid Kwesi Ato, who is the National Coordinator Office of APTA, Accra. We're also going to have the meet again because we are going to we'll be talking about custom uh, restrictions. So, Jenita, uh, is the senior too. advisor mm -hmm. of the Secretary General on Customs in AFTA, Secretary Takra. Mm -hmm. From South Africa, we are going to have Miss Tiki Bernard, who is the founder and CEO of the Shared Value uh, uh, Leadership Institute and Shift Impact Africa. And then from Ethiopia, we are going to have Miss Winkate Mutini. Who is the chambers, uh, uh, the chamber of Af Pan African Chamber of Commerce and Industry senior program manager? So it's going to be a very robust uh, uh, conference. We are going to have over forty academic papers presented at the technical sessions in the conference, and uh, we are going to have other side attractions uh, at the conference. Interesting. Okay, so um, quickly, in like a, a line or two. I know you've mentioned that we're going to be having you're going to be having a lot of keynote speakers from uh, across the continent, uh, but what yes. would you say the benefits would be for anyone who chooses to attend the conference in in a short you know one line or two? Tell us about the the benefits, the straight benefits, yeah, the go to benefits. Yeah, we we have been hearing about AFCFTA, hmm. but we don't know what it is. We don't know how we can benefit from it. Hmm. So this conference is going to let us into the benefits of AFCFTA and how industry, how private uh, institutions, how the academia can be part of these benefits. So we are going to be speaking to the academia, to the HR professionals, to captains of industry, to policymakers, to entrepreneurs, to administrators, both in mm. academia and the industry, to students, both undergraduates and postgraduates, and members mm. of the public. So, so, you know, so because these the are the... After, yeah, yes, so, so the these after are the is presently... Audience. Yes, our target audience. Mm, okay. So the, it is presently in the domain, the public domain. Public sector is one implementing the after. But it is the private sector that can actually drive this. And we want to open up that uh, uh, avenue and uh, that mm. knowledge so that the private sector can key into after and run with it. Okay, you're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3. We're about to wrap up this conversation and we're speaking with Henry Onukuba. He's been lecturing us briefly about this new innovation Africa is looking to launch. And there's going to be a conference coming up organized by the CIPN. Uh, but let's also know a few more things as well. Is it possible for people to join virtually or do we have to physically be there? Yeah, it's going to be a hybrid program. So you can actually join virtually, you can join physically. Uh, to register, all you need to do is to go to the CIPM website, uh, www.cipmnigeria.org slash academy. Come again with academy. that URL. www.cipmnigeria.org. O-R-U-G. CIPMnigeria.org. Yes, dot okay. org slash academic. <laughs> so once you click that, it takes you to the to the page where you will register. Uh, if you have any challenges, you could contact, send an email to mm. academic conference at cipmnigeria.org. All right. Or you call these numbers 081 okay. 081-765. H two three six eight. Let me take it again. Zero eight one right. seven six five. Okay. H two three six eight or okay. zero nine one three nine three five zero nine seven zero. Zero okay. nine one three nine three five zero nine seven zero. Okay, Henry Onukuba, MCIPM, yes. a chairman of CIPM Academic Conference Planning Committee. So that explains the reason why 
we have had a robust, uh, uh, you know, uh, level of information on the program this evening. Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, giving us an insight into the. We're looking forward to even having more conversations about this. I'm looking at, at Nigeria connecting to the rest of the world. I know Europe has um, the same format. The the European some European countries are connected by rail. Uh, there's the Eurostar. I think that's one of the companies that's in charge of connecting Europe. I know. London to Paris is like, it's easy breeze, you know, and we're looking forward to a chance or a time when Africa would indeed be connected to boost its uh, potential in terms of the economy. So Henry, thank you so much for being here with us on the show. Looking forward to having you again on the program in the future. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yes, that's about it on today's edition of The Office here on Lagos Talks 91.3. We just spoke to Henry Onukuba. MCIPM and the chairman, CIPM Academic Conference Planning Committee. And we just had a conversation about the impact of uh, the African continental free trade area on diversity and inclusion in the workplace. My name is Kola Wale, and of course, you know that uh, the office is proudly brought to you by the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM. And of course, Lagos Talks 91.3. Up next is Critical Thinking here on the Live Drive. This is Lagos Talks 91.3. We have a voice. It's Lagos Talks 91.3. Above the line, through the line, below the line. The world is changing, and so is advertising. Join us at the National Advertising Conference 